A few years ago, I did um, show you how you can create desktop application using PHP programming language. There is a library called PHP Desktop, and someone asked me to advance the system and add something we call encryption. So in our today's session, I would like to show you how the system I advanced it and how I managed to add encryption on the system. But in case maybe if you're first to be on this YouTube channel, this is called Star Technology. It's one of the best tech YouTube channel here in Kenya and Africa at large. And also we happen to be one of the fastest growing online learning platform. So in case maybe if you need to learn something like web development, this is the best uh, platform where uh, you can learn uh, that kind of uh, short course. And again, uh, if you want to know things like OTP, uh, circle systems, e-commerce, among other uh, systems, or maybe kind of uh, things that you might be looking to know how they work, like even Lipana and Pesa, uh, this is the best channel where you can learn all these things. So feel free to enroll and also to go through our YouTube channel and make sure also you click the subscribe button because that's how you normally support this channel. So without wasting time, let me jump right away and start showing you how the uh, system was advanced and how I managed to add um, the encryption part of it. And at the end of this video, I'll also share the source code so that uh, if you feel like you want to advance the system, feel free to do so. It is a school system. So in case maybe if you if it's your first time to work with the PHP desktop, uh, on this WW folder is where you normally put your project uh, files. So as you can see, these are the project files. And maybe if you want to run it, uh, you just run the setup, this one. And the system, you can package it in a in in an installable file. And it can be accessible uh, within the local area network. So you just need to open uh, that one like that. And you right click, then open the browser, on, open on, on a browser. And it is going to give you this IP address, which you can also configure it um, the IP address of your server. Like for example, when you go to the setting, this one, you select this one, you uh, right click and edit. You can be able to make some changes here. You add your IP address, which will be able to uh, be uh, accessible uh, via the browser uh, by anyone who needs to use the, the system. So as you can see now, I have opened the system on the browser. And as you can see, I can show you the password. Uh, you click here to see the password, but if you want to log in, you just log in as admin because we have got three users of these systems. Uh, this system, sorry. Um, that's the first one is the admin who will be able to add the employees. They can also add the classes, they can also add subjects and exams and generate reports based on these kind of things that they are going to add. And for example, if you go to employees, you can be able to click on this new employee and you get this. A form which you just fill the form and register for a new employee. Uh, we have got uh, different employees who can um, uh, be on different categories like receptionist, teachers, and administrators. So, admin will be able to log in as an admin. Uh, if this is teachers, teachers will have their own uh, portal where they can log in and do several things. So, uh, once you add the employees, now you can go ahead also. In case maybe you need to search an employee, I can come here and write Eric and automatically it's gonna uh, kind of uh, filter something like that. So as you can see, it has got uh, this pagination. Uh, like if you, in case maybe you have got more than employees like 10, it can also add a pagination like that. And again, uh, once you, are, you have added the employees, jump right away to the next part, which is adding the class because employees is the first thing that you need to add. Then you get to the class, because when you add a class, you have to specify the class teacher. Uh, that's why you can see, because this drop down it's dynamic and it will fetch uh, the information about the teachers from there, uh, from the database. Uh, as I said, I will show you uh, the SQL -like database so that you can be able to see how it looks like. Now, uh, the other part is the subject. Once you add the employees and classes, you'll add subject. And as you can see, you select the teacher. Once you select the teacher, you also select the class, which um, uh, this subject uh, is for. Now, after that, you add the subject and you can be able to do the same, like search, edit, and do a few things like here and there. Now, uh, after adding subject, there is exams which you can set because the system is based on the creating report form. It's one of the system that you can modify and start selling it. 
So uh, for the subject, it happens the same way. You can be able to, not subject, but exams. You can be able to specify exams. Like you can say, uh, you want to add exams for term, uh, term 1, 20, 23, something like that. Then here, uh, then you select the option to make it either active or inactive because you can either block the exam or unblock the exam. Uh, when you block it, no one will be able to add marks. Uh, that is what it means. So that is the admin part, and you can generate reports and all that. Uh, although that part is not uh, completed or finalized, but something that in case you get it, uh, the source code, you can modify and make it good. So um, one thing you need to know is that um, this one will run on the browser. And uh, yeah, so there is another user who is the secretary. And for the secretary, you just write two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then you log in as a secretary. And once you log in as a secretary, you can be able to add now the students. You admit new students. So as you can see, I just need to click there and I will be able to register new students like that. Uh, once you register student, it also handles things like um, a visitor's book uh, we, where you can add a visitor and specify where they are heading to. Is it seniors? Um, that is principal's office, deputy, and so forth and so forth. So uh, something like that you can need to add. Also, uh, I have a plan to advance the system so that I can be able to add things like uh, accountant. But in this case, just um, minor expenses, you can be able to add them here. Uh, just need to click there, specify if it is a border border guy who uh, maybe of, um, you, you, you did some transportation of some goods uh, and there, you can add there. Uh, if there is uh, any payment that you did, you can specify that. Uh, just like that so that you can track the some few things here and there now there is the most important part which is um, I have a, uh, an option to advance it and it's about uh, SMS remember we have got uh, SMS and emails so for the SMS uh, I want to separate this one so that I can have SMS and have a drop down menu like this one where because the reason with SMS, um, there is a system which I did about SMS. You need to check it. This video, where is it? It is about SMS, 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 this one. So this one, you will learn a lot about how you can modify SMS so that you can be able to uh, send SMS of different categories of or different classification. Like, for example, um, let me, I can demonstrate. Maybe let me open some here. Just a small part so that you can be able to understand what I mean. Start. So the project looks like this. Then I can say maybe um, local hosts. And uh, yeah, this one. So I can have a drop down that will be when I click SMS, I'll have a drop down that will show the following menus like single SMS, promotional SMS, and bulky SMS. When you go to promotional SMS, it's one message but being sent to many people where I can upload a CSV. So if I'm sending one SMS to all the parents to remind them about maybe opening day, I can do that. Then if I want to send an SMS that uh, shows maybe like results or maybe I want to show maybe uh, fee balances, I can have an Excel sheet which has got the phone numbers of the parents and the fee balances and all that then i upload and send and the system will be able to send so that's an advancement i'm planning also to add you can see the source code is ready it's just a matter a matter of fixing the code on the system so that is about sms and emails uh, but in this case maybe i just need to click there specify like that then enter your text and you click send and the same message is going to be sent same it applies to the email and also you can generate some reports here and there now that's all about the secretary part so the next part is about uh, the teacher's part remember when the students do exam uh, the teacher will mark the exam and after that uh, they will be able to now um, enter the marks on the system so as you can see i enter the username as the teacher and the password to be one two three up to ten uh, i think it's a teacher teacher like teachers i think teachers then i do one two three four five six seven eight is it teacher or teachers let me use teacher you can check the password yeah it's teacher then password one to ten then when i come here i just need to enter exam like this one and as you can see here um there is the option 
uh, for me to enter the marks um, so i can come here and specify like for example if i want to enter marks for the year 2022 i can pick exam like this one this one will show only the active exams and then i can say maybe i need form 3 something like that subject i can say maybe cre something like that i know there are no students and that's why it is displaying something which is empty because there are no students for form 3 um so if i need to do for like um, i think i've added all the marks uh if i'm not wrong up to what this is maths so i think maths is the last unit so let me say maths and i uh, do for which year something like that uh-huh form one then i search and i can be able to input marks for the form ones here so i just need to specify like for example uh we normally have three exams like uh, opener midterm and end term so opening exam and midterm uh, they add up to 30 so if i do like 20 and 20 uh, it you can see this one is adding up to 40 so this one is supposed to be 70 so if i do 89 and i try to submit it's giving me an error because it is telling me, me this one is supposed to be 15 i can do that in and if i submit again you can see this one again it is giving an error and if i try to submit again you can see this one is also giving me an error so in this case i can do maybe 70 uh no 68 so if i come again here and do 1 6 6 uh, 8 9 you can see this one will not have a problem this one is the one that is having a problem so this one doesn't have any problem so that's how you enter the marks and once you enter the marks you submit you fill the marks of all the students and you submit once you submit the marks you just need to go to what to generate reports because here you just need to check all the, uh, the subjects for each and every teacher. Uh, but you can filter it to only show the math, um, subject for the teacher who was logged in. So the other part is uh, contact, which is not that important on this part. But now, the most important that I want to show you is how you generate the report. As I said, you enter the marks here. Once you entered all the marks for all the units, or once all the teachers entered uh, the marks, uh, because they can log in. Uh, from their local area network using this IP address. Once they log in, they can be able to enter the marks. And once they enter marks, they come. Uh, the class teacher will come here and generate student report. So to generate the student's report, you just need to click student report like that. Then I choose class to be form one. Form one is the one which has got the students. So after that, I need to select exam. It's going to be term two, uh, 2022. I pick like that and generate the report form. And boom. This is how it generates the report form. As you can see, uh, this is the information which is provided here. Uh, we have got uh, a student progress report, form one, term one. Then the name of the student here, as you can see, um, uh, I grew up a mother. <laughs> then we have got uh, some information here which is provided like um, the grade. Uh, so the teachers they can either choose to sign or you can either choose to remove this column because you have got that information organized like that total marks mean grade is written here and you can be able to see the mean grade so the class teacher is going to sign here and there's also the school principal is going to sign here and also you can choose to bend um, the stamp or maybe they can be stamped one by one so that's how it's gonna look and it's going to generate um, for all the students, as you can see, the last student here, we have got uh, Salome Shitanda. And uh, as you can see, uh, uh, she has a mini grade of B uh, with this uh, max. And also, you can choose maybe to specify the average here if you want to put average on this part. So, uh, these are projects, uh, the source code I'm going to provide you with. And in case maybe you want to modify, you can, mo you can modify it the way you want and uh, do a few things. So... Uh, there is also option for chart, but this chart does not help that much. It can only help within the teachers or something like that, because the teachers are the one who want to interact with the system. But uh, it's something that you can even choose to modify it uh, to be accessible on the, on the internet and make it far much better. Now, 
Uh, to show you how the max is stored so that you can understand about encryption uh, because which is the most important part you need to know how it looks like so um, this was the project where is it uh, sorry sorry let me open again security then I go to www then you can see this is the DB folder so this is the SQLite uh, file I can click here and open with a DB browser for SQLite so I open it like that and once I open, I can be able to see all the tables. As you can see, there is the table for class. This is the, the field. There is a table for employees uh, and, all, and so forth and so forth. So I just need to browse data so that I can get to know this is the data for classes. And I can go to employees. I can check employees. As you can see, this is the data for employees. Uh, the password here is encrypted, as you can see. Again, to show encryption, there is uh, the most important part which is the max like for example when you check the max like this you can see there is opener uh, which is like either 20 30 something like that uh, like when you can see here the max is displayed in this format like figures numbers but when you check on the database you can see the max is stored in different uh, kind of encrypted information so it's very very difficult to know uh, which value is this uh, so uh, it's very hard to kind of even if you can be able to access the database you need to know how the data has been encrypted so uh, to show you how i achieved that um you just need to go back to uh, how do we call it uh, there is this code for the functions because i normally group functions on one file and then you can add them on a class so you can store the encryption key here so this is my encryption key and also it's going to be used as the description key so this is the source code for the is a simple function which encrypts my uh, data during input and this is the one that decrypts the data so yeah that's how i achieved encryption and decry decryption of data and as you can see when it is stored in the database it looks like that so uh, i've shown you what how the system as it was advanced uh, the previous video looked um, the the interface which was not that uh, one of the best and also you can do like uh, change password do a few things here and there so it's a project that you can expand it in a better way and um, i know most of you are going to advance the system in a and it's going to look nice so uh, thank you for supporting the code star technologies youtube channel make sure you download the source code from the description and uh, if you have not subscribed to our youtube channel kindly make sure you subscribe and if you want to learn anything to do with um, um, web development uh, feel free to register as a student and also you can access free learning resources uh, like notes and so forth for those who are taking either diploma or degree in it uh, or even certificate you can get some uh, content like notes pdf and all that from this enemy and again uh, for those who want to implement some features like uh, one-time password you can see uh, sending sms we have got a circle system which you can uh, look for a client or you get a commission for that even an e-commerce and all those kind of stuff uh, plagiarism uh, there is even uh, mpsa integration uh, in bulky emails how you can send bulky emails wordpress systems there is a lot which you can learn from this one and uh, uh, USS the application like this one is a simple insurance USSD system and when you go through you are going to learn a lot from this uh, YouTube channel so there is a reason for you to click the subscribe button so that you can learn a lot uh, from code star technologies and great minds of code star fraternity so thank you and may God bless you if maybe you need to support this channel feel free by clicking patreon uh, put your something small it can be 100 bob and send to us a message we will appreciate to interact with the circle system you just need to click this one uh, also to interact with the shop system you need to click this one and all that information there are videos which uh, explain better about the circle system and also the um, e-commerce so feel free to follow them and you learn a lot thank you and my god bless you